This past season for the UNI men's basketball team was a roller coaster of a year. Through key injuries, postponing a few games, and a whole lot more. UNI was picked to finish first in the Missouri Valley Conference preseason poll, followed by Loyola Chicago. It all started with the first week of practices starting the last week of October instead of the regular scheduled start, which was the which was two weeks before. UNI's first regular season game was on November 25th when they played in the Crossover Classic in Sioux Falls, South Dakota against the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers. The Panthers were defeated 93-87. to The next day, the Panthers matched up with the Gales from St. Mary's University. The Panthers lost that game 66-64. to The final day for the Panthers in the Crossover Classic was against the Utah State Aggies. In the end, the Aggies defeated the Panthers 82-71. to The Panthers finished in last place at the Crossover Classic. On December 4th, UNI played its first home game of this year and hosted NAIA school St. Ambrose University. UNI defeated St. Ambrose 98-53. to On December 9th, the UNI Panthers faced the Richmond Spiders in Richmond, Virginia. The Spiders took that game 78-68. A few days later, last year's M Missouri Valley Conference Player of the Year guard A.J. Green would have a season-ending hip surgery. The next week, you and I was supposed to host Green Bay, play at Wisconsin, and at Marshall. The Green Bay game got canceled due to COVID-19 protocols. Following that, the team did not play their final two road non-conference games against Wisconsin and Marshall. The Panthers had a number of injuries and had an impact on the team. So the Panthers' plan was to play their next game at home versus the Missouri State Bears to open up their conference season. The Missouri State Bears came away with the first win of the conference season over UNI, 79-59. UNI got back on track the next day and got the win, 85-75, over the Bears. Austin Fife led the way for the Panthers, finishing with 21 points while guard Nate Heisey scored 15 points. The Panthers were to travel to Evansville for their next two games. In Game 1 against the Purple Aces, the Panthers fell to Evansville 65-61. While the Panthers have not have been known for hitting three-pointers, this was the first time since February 3, 2000 that the UNI Panthers did not knock down a shot from the three-point line. In Game 2 against Evansville, UNI came up short in that one as well, 70-64. The Panthers were 2 and 7 overall and 1 and 4 in conference play. The Panthers next games were January 10th and 11th as they were to face off against Bradley. Game 1 went to the Panthers way as they defeated the Bradley Braves 78 to 72. After the first half, the game was tied 36 to 36 and the Panthers outscored the Braves 42 to 36 in the second half giving the Panthers the win. Austin Fife had 18 points and added 9 rebounds, while Trey Burrow had 15 points and 3 assists. The following night, the Braves defeated UNI 75-73. The Panthers were sitting 3-8 overall and 2-4 and in conference play. UNI is to travel to Chicago, Illinois to play the Loyola Chicago Ramblers. Both of these games against Loyola got some national attention as they were aired on ESPN and ESPN2. UNI came out of the gates as they led the first half for over 14 minutes in the first game, but the Ramblers got hot late in the first half and the second half as they defeated UNI 72-57 in Game 1. Austin Fife recorded his fourth double-double this season. He had 18 points and 12 rebounds. In Game 2, the Panthers did not get anything going. The Ramblers took this one 88-46. In the first half, the Ramblers outscored UNI 32-14 in the first 10 minutes of the game. UNI moved to 3-10 overall and 2-6 and in conference play. UNI hosted Division III school Coe College on January 25th and defeated the Cohawks 70-60. Nate Heisey and Trey Burhow both led the Panthers in scoring 18 points each. The Panthers' next set of games were on January 30th and 31st as they traveled to Southern Illinois. 
Coming into this game, UNI head coach Ben Jacobson was sitting fifth in all-time Missouri Valley Conference wins, but slid into fourth place with 156 wins in the conference as UNI defeated Southern Illinois 74 to 62 in the Panthers' first game in Carbondale, Illinois. Titan Anderson made his debut after undergoing knee surgery earlier in the season and scored six points. Noah Carter had his first career double-double and scored 21 points and added 12 rebounds. In Game 2, the Panthers came up short to the Salukis as SIU defeated UNI 71-68. The Panthers are now 5-11 overall in 3-7 and seven in MVC play. The next set of games were at home against Indiana State. Indiana State took Game 1 61-57. Indiana State outscored UNI 36-29 in the second half but the Panthers bounced back the following night as they beat the Indiana State Sycamores 70-67 to to move to 6-12 overall and 4-8 in MVC play. Noah Carter finished with 25 points and 13 rebounds for second double-double of the season. Panthers and the Drake Bulldogs were scheduled to play for a midweek game in in-state rival. In that game, the Panthers fell to the Drake Bulldogs 80-59, UNI was out-rebounded 25-16 in the first half against Drake. The Panthers moved to 6-13 overall and 4-9 in NBC play. The Panthers were home that weekend to face Valparaiso. In Game 1, Valpo beat UNI 70-57. UNI struggled from the field shooting 33.9% that game. UNI added another win into MVC play as they beat Valpo in Game 2, 74-60. Trey Burhau and Noah Carter both scored 17 points. The Panthers also had 36 points in the paint. Another midweek battle as Drake visited UNI on February 17th. The Bulldogs took Game 2 and defeated the Panthers 77-69, and UNI uh, is now at 7-15 overall in 5-11 in conference play. The final set of games were to happen on February 26th and 27th at Illinois State. The Panthers defeated Illinois State in the first game, 70-56 to behind Trey Burhaus, 15 points. UNI was also 19-22 of from the free throw line. Game 2 was a thriller for UNI as they defeated the Redbirds in double overtime, 94-87. to Bowen Bourne finished the game with 21 points and 7 assists. UNI shot 51% from the field and scored 48 points inside the paint. This was also Coach Jacobson's 300th career victory as the UNI men's basketball coach. UNI finished the regular season at 9-15 overall and 7-11 in NBC play. Next up was the Missouri Valley Conference men's basketball tournament. The Panthers were the number 7 seed and faced the number 10 seed Illinois State Redbirds in St. Louis on March 4th for their third straight matchup against ISU. Both teams had leads in the first half and the Panthers took a halftime lead of 30 to 29. In the second half, U and I struggled midway until Noah Carter hit, hit the first three-pointer for U and I and took the lead 44 to 43. Both teams still traded leads until the Panthers pulled ahead after a jumper by Austin Fife and a three-pointer from Nate Heisey. Bowen Bourne and Trey Burhau also knocked down clutch shots in the last couple of minutes. UNI defeated Illinois State 65-60. Austin Fife scored 21 points and grabbed 9 rebounds. Taiwan Pickford had his highest point total this season with 11 points and had 9 rebounds. The Panthers were scheduled to play Drake in the next round of the MVC tournament. As the Panthers were preparing to play Drake the upcoming day, the Missouri Valley Conference canceled the game between UNI and Drake due to a positive COVID-19 test result among the University of Northern Iowa's Tier 1 personnel. Each team inside the MVC required to undergo a daily COVID-19 test for the week until the MVC tournament and throughout the tournament. The positive result was found as a part of Thursday evening's testing after the game. You can read the article here for more details. UNI's season was over and Drake advanced to play the winner of the Missouri State Valparaiso game. Things didn't go as planned when the UNI basketball team was down in St. Louis. The Panthers were playing their best basketball of the season the past two weeks and had great hopes going into the MVC tournament. 
The Panthers are already ready to get back out on the court next season as spring workouts are currently happening. This will be a season that the players, coaches, and managers will never forget.